Good morning and welcome to worship here at St. John's in San Francisco. My name is Sam Lundquist. I'm the associate pastor here at St. John's and it is always a joy to be with you, especially during this uh, Advent and Christmas season. As you can see, We've decked our halls here at St. John's, and uh, we're just so thrilled to be able to share uh, the joy of the season, the joy of Christmas time with you. If you're in the area, uh, we have our sanctuary open throughout the week. If you'd like to just sit and be in a space that is uh, warm, uh, both uh, spiritually and we have the heat on in here because it's cold today. <laughs> um, this place is open for you and you're, you're welcome to just uh, be in here and spend time in music and in these uh, with this gorgeous uh, Christmas uh, decorations that we have. So come on down if you're in the area. We'd love to see you. And as always, just know that we're praying for you. Wherever you're joining us from, near or far, we hold everyone that is connected to our community uh, in prayer throughout the week. So know that you are on our hearts and in our minds uh, with whatever you may be dealing with. Uh, we are praying for you. Today we're continuing in our Advent series called What Are You Waiting For? This is week two, the week of peace in our Advent calendar. And we're taking a look at the story of Mary and Joseph that we find in the Gospel of Matthew as uh, the two of them prepare for the birth of Christ. So we'll get to that in just a moment, but a few uh, quick announcements to let you know about what's going on here at St. John's. Uh, we have a lot of things going on throughout December, throughout the Advent and Christmas season. Um, number one, the best way to know everything about what's going on is to check out our website, stjohnssf.org. Uh, there's a Christmas button on top, and that'll take you to a special Christmas page that lists all the things going on throughout the month of December. And uh, we've got a lot coming up. On uh, December 11th at 5 p.m., we have our intergenerational family service. This is, uh, it's for everyone, but primarily for our families with uh, young children. Uh, we're gonna be sharing the Christmas story with uh, carols and uh, treats and all sorts of uh, wonderful things for the, for the kids. So come on down uh, the 11th of December at 5 p.m. We also have coming up our Christmas Eve services at 5.30 and 8, and then a Christmas Day service, because Christmas falls on a Sunday this year, at our normal 10 a.m. time. That'll be all on our website, stjohnssf.org slash Christmas. You'll find all of that there. We also have throughout the Advent season, this uh, Advent uh, reflection booklet. And if you're at home and want to kind of follow along with what we're doing in worship and just have a chance to reflect on the season, uh, take a look at this booklet. That's on the website as well. And this is filled with uh, readings, uh, prayers, and you can do this uh, as you light an Advent candle at home. Um, but you can check that out on our website, download it. It's a PDF. Um, it's right there. And it's just a great way to um, celebrate, reflect, and meditate on the season. Uh, we also have coming up this coming Monday, uh, December 5th, uh, at 6 p.m., we have our second 20s and 30s gathering. We're going to be doing uh, a potluck dinner uh, in the Mission District, so check out the details for that on our website. If you are in your 20s or 30s, or if you know someone who is in their 20s and 30s, you are welcome to join us, and of course, you're welcome to bring friends along as well. Uh, also this season, we are we have a, a giving opportunity for, for the holiday season. We're giving to our friends and partners who support migrants entering into the United States. And we're supporting an amazing organization as well as folks that we've accompanied or connected to in the past. All of the details for that are on our website. And if you uh, would like to give, all the directions uh, to do so are there. If you'd like to give uh, physical gifts, which we are collecting, things like diapers and clothing and uh, just kind of uh, household supplies and that sort of thing, you can always come down to our uh, building uh, whenever we're open. The giving tree is right up in the front. You can pull off an ornament uh, with a gift item on there and then just bring back that gift item and, and place it under the tree and we'll make sure uh, that we get that to where it needs to go. But uh, again, check out our website for all the details. And also, if you aren't signed up for our online newsletter, you can sign up on our website and uh, you'll get an uh, email newsletter every week just with all of the details about what's going on uh, here at St. John's. There's all sorts of other things uh, going on. Check out our website for all those details. Uh, it'll be right there for you. With that, again, I wish you just a happy Advent season uh, as we enter into this time of worship together. Things we thought we 
week we enter into the Advent week of peace and I invite you to hear this meditation as we light the candle. We wait in the darkness expectantly, longingly, anxiously, thoughtfully. The darkness is our friend. In the darkness of night we find silence, strength, and solace. In the darkness of night, the Christ child was sustained until he was ready to spring forth. It was the darkness that was pierced by the light of an angel proclaiming something new was arising in this world. In the darkness of the night, a miracle emerged. In the darkness of the desert, Mary and Joseph breathed the fresh air of the Spirit as their journey began. It is only in darkness that we can know the magic of solitude, the quietness of creation, the calmness that dwells in all things. In the darkness, we can listen, if we let ourselves, to the whispers of God traveling on the wind that say, I love you. God whispers still. Sometimes in the darkness, we are left nose to nose with just how mysterious life truly is. We can sit with how strange it is that we are even here, how fragile, and therefore how blessed our present moment is. In that same darkness, we learn to call the mystery our friend. And in that same darkness, we learn to trust that there is always goodness beneath our feet. In the darkness, we know that you are with us, O God, yet still we await your coming. In the darkness that contains both our restlessness and our peace, we watch for a sign of God's peace. For you are with us, O God, in darkness and in light. Amen. This Advent, we're spending time with the question, what are you waiting for? As we look to different characters in our Christmas story, both the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, and how they might respond or feel about that question. Now, last week, we looked at the Gospel of John uh, that describes a world in darkness waiting for light and our invitation from Teresa 
uh, during this Advent season was to really stop and witness where we see and experience God's light in our world. Now, today we're in the Gospel of Matthew with one of the two stories about the birth of Jesus, the other being in the Gospel of Luke. And this story, uh, this version of it, focuses on Mary and Joseph, largely Joseph, in the months before the birth. So as we sit with these words and uh, with Mary and Joseph, I invite you again to just consider the question that's before us. What are you waiting for? So hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew. This is Matthew chapter 1. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man because He didn't want to humiliate her. He decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And the angel said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Now when Joseph woke up, he did just as as an angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. This is the word of the Lord. What are you waiting for? Well, as I sat with this question in our story today, I landed on a pretty simple answer. A baby. For Mary, for Joseph, the Christmas story isn't just about one night. And it's not about four weeks of lighting candles every week either. It's about nine months-ish of waiting day after day after day for a baby. Through this story, we're invited to share with them that time of life, or really that time before life, of hoping, wondering, nurturing, preparing for the birth of a new child into this world. Now, I have to say that I've always read our passage today with a little bit of distance. Or rather, I didn't feel, you know, too connected, too pulled into the words. I haven't felt a deep uh, connection to these moments in the Christmas story, and I was thinking about that. And I chalked it up largely to, you know, I don't have kids of my own. And also, the fact is most of my dearest friends have yet to have kids themselves. Some of them do, but not, not many of them. But that's all begun to change. My close friends have started their journeys into parenthood. And I've gotten to sit with them through the, the smiles, the laughs, the tears, and the struggles. And all the ups and downs that have come along the way. Many of you have already experienced that in your own lives with the people closest to you, but this has been relatively new to me. And over the past year, I've been privileged to walk the journey of of pregnancy with one of my dearest, best friends. Now, we've known each other since college, and we've gone through a lot, a lot of life together. After a long time of thinking and considering, she finally made the decision to uh, have a baby on her own. She'd long wanted to start a family, and something about the last year with all of the pandemic, changes, transitions, life was different. The time just felt right for her. Now, I really had no idea what all of this would entail for her, but it ended up being a lot of things. All sorts of doctor's appointments and checkups, daily painful injections to prepare her body and make sure it was ready for pregnancy, lifestyle changes to create as healthy of an environment uh, as possible for the new baby, test after test after test to ensure that everything, all the hormone levels uh, in her body looked good, and of course, constant worrying about whether she was doing everything right. Now, perhaps some of you have been on this journey too, and all I have to say is that I'm in awe of you. I was blown away by the courage, the strength, the patience, the endurance that my friend had to go through this whole process on her own. It was so difficult, and she was amazing. Well, after a long period of time, everything, all those tests and everything, everything looked good. In fact, her doctor said it looked perfect, and nothing could be better. All the math checked out, the science looked good, all of the numbers. 
And so she was ready to go through an embryo transfer. The big day came, and it was deemed a huge, huge success. And then came a bunch of aftercare procedure things, more injections, more vitamins. She was practicing meditation. Uh, she was receiving acupuncture to deal with any stress or anxiety or tension that might ramp up those cortisol levels. And my favorite one, right after her procedure, like immediately after, she got McDonald's french fries because there's some sort of urban legend or myth that says there's something about all the salt in those fries that is supposed to help with hydration or something. I'm not really sure how it works, but it's McDonald's, so I'm 100% on board for that one. It seems very, very scientific. Um, and after two weeks, she went for her next test. It was a big one. She was uh, going to see if she was officially pregnant. And she wasn't. The procedure didn't work. She called me with the news, and all we could do was cry on the phone. Because it didn't make sense. All the numbers, they were right. All of the hormone levels, they were right. All of the aftercare stuff, it was right. The doctor said it was perfect. She had done it all. She'd done better than it all. She couldn't have done it better, and yet it didn't work. God, that hurt. It hurt so much, and it hurt not to know why. There never really was an answer, and there never will be an answer. Now, a few days later, we talked on the phone again, and the pain had settled a bit. The confusion was still there, but a new hopefulness had begun to emerge, and she'd found the strength to at least imagine trying it all again. And as we were talking in the middle of that, we both started reflecting on how strange the beginnings of life are, how everything can be so perfect, all the ducks in a row, all the pieces in place, but we can't control it. Something else has to make it all happen. What a mystery that is. I come to our story today of Mary and Joseph differently than I ever have. I've always heard these words and imagined this miracle unfolding. And it's right there in the text. A spirit-filled pregnancy, a dream filled with angels, a prophecy fulfilled. It was written to be absolutely unbelievable in the best way possible. But having spent this time, these many months with my friend, I've come to see this story as not just the miraculous beginning of Jesus' life, but of every life. Every life is miraculous because getting here is so difficult. So many things have to line up for life to happen. And even when they do, sometimes it doesn't. But sometimes it does. That happens too. A lot it did for us, for you, for me. We made it into creation. We are here. You are alive. You are a miracle. We are blessed with life. God blessed each of us with life. That's God's first blessing, first gift to us, life itself. And because of that blessing, we can move and breathe and think and learn and dance and sing and hug and stand and dream and laugh and cry and smile and love. The gift of life makes all of that possible. It all happens because God brought you and me to life. God said yes to us. God said yes to you. In fact, God says yes to all people, all who have been, all who will be, by blessing them with the gift of life and all the possibilities that can emerge from that. No matter what may be happening in our worlds, we can know that God is with us and knows us and loves us simply because we're alive. With every breath in and out, we can Rest in the knowledge that God's Spirit sustains us moment after moment. Life, just life, is something to be so grateful for. And we must hang on to that gratitude. We need to rest in that blessing because we live in a world that doesn't always say yes to everyone all the time, the way God says yes to us. The truth of our world is that often people are said no to. Their lives are said no to. We even find some who say that certain lives are not worth living at all. And that's simply not true. I want to point us towards Oscar Romero, who's a Catholic priest, a bishop in El Salvador, and in the 70s and 80s, he spoke out against a lot of violence that was erupting in the country, even at the hands of the, the government. 
It was particularly emerging towards the poor, and he courageously stood against that violence and stood with the victims who were suffering. He demanded justice for the poor and envisioned a world where all people's lives were validated and worth living. In the midst of that suffering one Christmas season, he shared these words with his hurting people. He said to them, this is the Christian's joy. I know that I'm a thought in God, no matter how insignificant I may be. The most abandoned of beings, one no one thinks of. Today, when we think of Christmas gifts, how many outcasts no one thinks of? Think to yourselves, you that are outcasts, you that feel you are nothing in history, I know that I am a thought in God. Would that my voice might reach the imprisoned like a ray of light of Christmas hope, might also say to you, the sick, the elderly, in the home for the aged, the hospital patients, you that live in shacks and shanty towns, you coffee harvesters trying to garner your only wage for the whole year, you that are tortured, God's eternal purpose has thought of all of you. God loves you, and like Mary, he incarnates that thought in his womb. Oscar Romero. No matter what the world may throw your way, in your laughter, in your tears, God is thinking of you. God is loving you. And you can know that simply because you're alive. God's gift of life is something we must always cherish, our own lives and the lives of others, because life is fragile, it's uncertain, and it is so mysterious. Three weeks ago, I was reminded of this again when we witnessed another example of someone saying that certain lives were not worth living. It was the tragedy of another shooting, a shooting at an LGBTQ bar in Colorado Springs. When I saw the headlines pop up on my phone, I was just waking up, scrolling through the news, and I froze. I had to put my phone down. I felt sick to my stomach. In fact, I have yet to read a single article about that incident. I've only read headlines. I just haven't been able to because it's been too much. A few days later, I spent time with some friends. We started talking about everything that had happened, processing it all and what it meant for us. And all of us said that sometimes, oftentimes, we feel a little twitch of fear when we go into certain places now because we just never know if we're going to be safe. It's a terrible feeling. But then as we were sitting there with that, one of our friends said to the group, I feel lucky to be with you all. I love you all. And I need you to know that. We are lucky. Life is so precious. And it comes from something, someone outside of ourselves that has blessed us with it. We must never forget that. This week is our Advent week of peace. And as we await the incredible miracle of Christ, may we find peace in the miracle that is our own life. God loves each of us so much. There might be no better way to know that than simply by taking a deep breath. We're alive and we are here. May we rest in that peace. And may we carry that peace to others, too, by bringing life, nurturing life, caring for life wherever and however we can, just as Mary and Joseph did in those days, weeks, and months of waiting when they used the miracles of their own lives to tend to a new miracle in their midst. Amen. Friends, it has been so good to be with you in worship today. I hope that you are well wherever you are whatever may be going on in your life, know that you are held in the arms of love by God and know that God is as close to you as your breath. In this week of peace, may you find peace knowing that in your breath, in your moving in this world, in your life itself, God is there loving you in the midst of all of that. May you go knowing that there is a God above you, watching over you, a God beneath you, lifting you up every time that you fall, that Christ is by your side, your constant friend and companion. 
and the Holy Spirit, that breath of life that comes into you every single moment of the day with nothing but love, nothing but love, friends. May you find peace and rest in that. Go in that peace. Amen. Amen.